Uh, Russell yes, Wilson sir. is the designated QB1 in Pittsburgh, and Justin Fields is the backup. However, an NFL executive told ESPN that the Steelers could release Wilson if he doesn't play well in training camp. B, are you buying this? Uh, I'm not buying it. You know, um, I'm not buying it because what NFL executive knows the Pittsburgh Steelers business? So Omar, Omar Khan, Omar Khan, he's sitting around with other executives and GMs and he's saying, hey guys, look, we just picked up Russell Wilson, but this is the play. Like, I don't see that happening. Do I see him thinking this way? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, you got Russell Wilson on veteran minimum. What is it? $1.2, $1.3 million. And if he doesn't play well, yeah, you can get away from Russell Wilson for almost nothing, right? In football terms, almost nothing. But I just don't see another executive, you know, understanding and really knowing what they're thinking and what they're doing. Now, as an executive, I can see uh, Adam Schefter and an executive sitting down, Mo, and, 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 you know, and he's like, yeah, I can, I can see the Steelers doing this, right? Because you're an executive, you're in that position. And, and, and listen, the, the, the game plan and the template isn't that different for all 32 teams, right? Like, you understand the strategy. Now, I will say this, though. What people need to understand like, is, is like Russell Wilson, he doesn't have bad days, right? Like, meaning like in practice, how he shows up at work. So we're talking about Russell Wilson being let go in, in training camp. I played with Russell Wilson. Um, I've known Russell Wilson for a long time. I know guys and coaches who've been around Russell for years. I'm telling you, it doesn't get any better than Russell Wilson. Now, if we were looking at a uh, 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 Russell Wilson, you know, that physically couldn't do it anymore, broken down, his body's beat up, then I can say, all right, this could be a possibility. But Russell Wilson's in great shape, just worked out with him. Uh, Russell Wilson still has the passion and the fire, the desire to go win. You heard his comments, I want to win two in four years. Aaron Donald retires with the Aaron Donald say yesterday on his own podcast. I don't have the passion for the game anymore, to go through 17 games, to go through training camp. Russell Wilson has that, right? And so what I'm saying is, yes, right? Russell Wilson is QB1. They gave him that. Great job, Pittsburgh Steelers. But it is a competition. And it will make both of those guys better, Mo, in that room. But I'm telling y'all right now, Russell Wilson will not be cut in no training camp. He might. He, he, the only way that he'll be cut from the Pittsburgh Steelers is the Pittsburgh Steelers are sitting at 0-6, 0-7. They're like, okay, you know, this is one of the worst years we've ever had. Let's just now go build for the future. We're going to throw Justin Fields in there. When I tell you Russell Wilson is a pro's pro, Russell Wilson is a machine. He's a machine. He's going to be the first one in the building. He's going to be the last one to leave. Justin Fields is not going to outwork him. He'll match him because he has to, but he's going to be following Russell Wilson. But there's no way in hell that Justin Fields will outwork Russell Wilson. Russell Mm -hmm. Wilson is one of the best I've ever been around. And when I said that he doesn't have bad days, what I mean by that is, yeah, he might go out there and fumble a snap every once in a while. Quarterbacks throws interceptions in practice for sure. But when I tell you that what you want in a quarterback, how to uh, operate an offense, how to approach uh, film review and you know, the study room and practice, it doesn't get any better than that. So I do, I do not see Russell Wilson uh, being cut in, in, in training camp, Mo. Like, from a quarterback's perspective, what do you see? How do you feel about this? You think this could happen? Yeah, B, I, I agree with you. I think that report's dumb. I talked to Ike Taylor, the legendary Steelers DB, when I was at Miami Pro Day. So he's one of the coaches. He was running the drills. I was talking to him actually for a while about – Russ and kind of like how this new team is looking with with a lot of new faces. Um, he inside that room inside that franchise, there's a lot of high hopes. Like they think they can bring back Seattle Russ. Mm. Um, mm. I think with the stability of what Mike Tomlin brings, I think with the electricity outside with George Pickens, um, they're gonna Arthur Smith. I think is a really great offensive mind. If they can bring back what he was able to do with Ryan Tannehill in Tennessee, with a lot of play action with Najee, some um, intermediate digs, you know, posts and taking a few shots here yep. and now, now and there. Um, they're really excited about Russ. My big, the most interesting part here is why did Justin Fields choose Pittsburgh? Because apparently the report was that he had a few different options. Yep. 
And I know Ryan Poles wanted to do well by him and give him a, trade him to a situation that he wanted to be in. So it was like, what's, what's going on in Justin's mind? Is it, hey, Russell didn't play well in Denver, I think I can take over? Or is it, I can learn from Russ yeah. for like two years and then him being my mentor, I could take over after that. You answered the question. What do you think it is? Yo, let's be real yeah. now. Let's be real, Mo. What do you think it is? Come on, uh, say it. Yeah, I mean, he wants to play. I, I, I've never met Justin, but like as a competitor, he, he's been a starter since he's been five years old. Like he's never been benched. So I think he's probably thinking, he's probably leaning towards, hey, the team starts off 0-3, 0-4, 1-3. -3. Like he's going to get an opportunity. Yeah. I, I, I think it's the I think it's a I think it's I mean that's exactly what you just said basically mm -hmm. with different words, but B C, you know uh, I think it's a I think it's what Mo said first it's Russell Wilson, uh, from the outside looking in, year one definitely the team nobody played well year two he played well he put up good numbers but we still were suspicious of Russell Wilson so Justin Fields is sitting back B C and he's like. Hell yeah, that's why I want to go there. Exactly. It's a good situation, and I can beat out Russell Wilson. That's what he's that's thinking. That's what he's thinking. That's exactly <laughs> what he's thinking. He's like, yo, I'm going to go over here. That's a sweet spot. He's like, he's thinking, like, yo, it's sweet over here. I'm going to go in here, do my thing. They're going to I'm gonna outwork them. I'm going to kill them. I'm going to take over. It's my job. You know what I mean? He's going in there with the, with the, with the mindset that that's his, that's his job. So, so, so I'll say this really quickly. Look, I, Russell Wilson is a brother. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm a fan also. You know, I'm a fan of greatness. I'm a fan of dudes that do it the right way. I'm a fan of guys that I can tell my sons he's doing it the right way. What can you learn from him? Figure it out and take it and put it into your toolbox. I'm a fan of Russell Wilson. I'm also a huge fan of Justin Fields. Mm -hmm. I think the kid is special and I like him as a person. Right. There's been several times I've communicated with him in passing. There's been times we message each other. Right. Like I am a fan of Justin Fields, the football player and the person. Sometimes you're in situations where it just doesn't work out. We expect these quarterbacks to come in in year one, year two and be fucking Aaron Rodgers. Mm. Just doesn't happen like that for everyone. And it doesn't mean that they're not good. And there's so many other factors, and we don't have to get into that. We don't have to throw anybody in the bus. But I'm telling you, Justin Fields is a player. He needs the right situation, right? Look at Aaron Rodgers. I saw something yesterday online where it's like uh, talking about our guy, uh, quarterback, USC, went to the Jets, bounced around a little bit. Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold's yeah. turning what, 26, 27? Yeah, he's young. He's about to turn 27. Do you know Aaron Rodgers? Was drafted at 22, <laughs> sat on the bench for four years, and didn't get his first start till he was 27. That's crazy. Right that around 27. Yeah, that yeah. is kind of crazy. Right, think about that. Yeah. yeah. Sam Darnold is young, so I'm even saying throwing Sam Darnold this conversation. There's a possibility that Sam Darnold can get his career on track and be legendary, and get it on track because of what everything that we said and the expectations we put on him. But Sam Darnold is young, so what I'm saying is this: Justin Fields is him. I like Justin Fields. Okay. Maybe this is throw up the thing on the back. Put a, put put the thing on the back. What is it called? The uh, what's the thing that the the little background that y'all just had? The, the second. Oh, take it or leave it. Take uh, it or leave it. Maybe this is the t fucking take it or leave it <laughs> spot. You don't have to do it. But this is the take it or leave it spot right here. Okay, a new segment brought to you by Paper Route via I Am Athlete. Take it or leave it. So here's my take it or leave it take right here, Mo, and I'll let you guys respond. Justin Fields think is probably thinking option A. Russell Wilson, look, is there for the taking. Now, before I get into my take it or leave it, I'm going to say this. This quarterback room will be phenomenal, and it will be uh, healthy but it's going to be competition and they're going to push each other, going to make each other better. Russell's going to teach Justin so much. Justin's going to learn so much. And I also believe that Justin's going to teach Russell some things and also push Russell. That's what you want as a competitor. Sometimes it's better when it comes from inside and not outside. Mm -hmm. Right? We, we will probably get Russell Wilson's best year ever. But here's a take it or leave it. The Pittsburgh Steelers are going to be in a conundrum at the end of this year. 
Russell Wilson will be an MVP candidate. Whoa. Russell Wilson was in a new system last year. Coach Payton was clear that Coach Payton really uh, was super conservative and was really holding Russell Wilson back in a lot of ways. And the guy before he was benched with games left, a couple games left, still had 26 touchdowns, eight interceptions. And he was, what, second in the AFC in most categories, passing categories. Most, right? Couple. Now in this situation, with a bigger chip on his shoulder, almost in a healthier place where it's like, damn, that pressure's not there, the expectation's not there. It's still there for him. You know, he wants to, his legacy, Super Bowls, and all of that. But it's not the same weight. The Pittsburgh Steelers will be in a conundrum. Russell Wilson will not lose his job. Justin Fields probably get in and have a package for him. If they're smart, they'll do that. But they're not going to disrupt Russell Wilson's play. They can't do that. They'll do it in a healthy way, right? Justin Fields will show extremely well in the offseason, in training camp, and also preseason, and also when he get his opportunities, maybe here and there in the game or in practice. And they're going to have to say, look at themselves internally and say, do we extend Russell Wilson? and give him 50-something million dollars a year? Or do we go with Justin Fields, and maybe Justin Fields gets like a Danny Dimes type of deal? What do Mm. you do? What's going to happen is Russell Wilson's going to be extended by the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're going to keep him. And Justin Fields is going to be in prime position to go to another place and be the starter and get a really good deal. Do you guys take it, or do you leave it, Mo? Yeah, B, the issue with Russ has never been being a pro's pro. We know this dude works. He's posting all these videos. He's a grinder. It's more about him relating with the guys and fit in as a culture. So as someone who played with him, I want to know what your take on Russ is because I listened to Marshawn, I believe, tell Shannon that story of not even having his phone number. And that's someone who's in the trenches with him, someone who's in the backfield with him, played with him for almost a decade. That's right. Um, how there's a lot of debate it's very polarizing kind of idea about russell as the person how is he and is he able to bring guys along with him as a new guy in pittsburgh that's right russell wilson is different russell wilson is the all-american boy russell wilson is a christian russell wilson is not going to be in the locker room talking about what girls we met last night or what clubs we're going to tomorrow Russell Wilson's not that. Russell Wilson's going to be carrying a gallon of water. This is why I carry a gallon of water. You talk about influence. I'm him. I'm Brandon Marshall. I played 13 years in the National Football League, and I put up Hall of Fame numbers. In my time with Russell Wilson, he's influenced me. This is one of the reasons why I walk around with a gallon, because Mm -hmm. Russell Wilson walks through the building or walks through life (laughs) with a gallon of water. Okay? So... Russell Wilson's all about business. If it's not about business, then Russell Wilson showing up at the cafeteria table and in the locker room and we're talking about club live and we're talking about jewelry and all these other things, it's probably going to feel a little awkward. Why? Because Russell Wilson probably rather talk about his kids or family. He'd rather talk about football. He can't get football off his mind. And he'd probably rather talk about business as well. And one of the things that he can't talk about most of the time, which he's really brilliant, that he's building an empire, is his business, right? If it's not in those areas, then he's not really that relatable. It's like what we have in common is football and football, that's it. So I get it, okay? But Russell Wilson, you know, you mentioned uh, Marshawn Lynch in this interview that he did with Shannon Sharp talking about, I, I called him and he called me back from a private number. I talked to Russ. And Russ said, man, he said, he said, man, uh, uh, laughing. He said, man, Marshawn was on that Hennessy, man. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And and, and I know Marshawn. I love Marshawn. Marshawn is uh, like, like Marshawn's him. Like, I love Marshawn. But I will say this as a Russell Wilson friend, brother, and fan. There's times Russell Wilson called me from block numbers. Mm. So I don't know what happened 10 years ago. But what I do know is Russell Wilson sometimes calls me from block number. Hell, sometimes he calls me from Sierra sales number. I'm like, what the hell is this 404 number? Oh, B, this is uh, C. Um, 
Uh, Russ is in the car. He wants to talk to you here. Damn, Russ, just what, what happened to the the, the, the the first number? Yeah. So who knows what Russell Wilson was thinking there, okay? And then also Cam Newton is a guy who I'm really, like, it's my, another brother. He calls me from private numbers, right? So, like, this whole thing of, like, this and not, I just think when a guy like Russell Wilson um, is – in the center of a lot of controversy and everybody's talking, it's almost like a snowball effect. It just gets bigger and bigger and faster and faster to the mm -hmm. point where, like, and for him, for instance, it gets out of control. Marshall Lynch went so many years speaking highly of Mar uh, of Russell. Mm -hmm. For sure they had moments, and you know, that's in any relationship, especially on the team where you know guys may rub you the wrong way or say something you don't like, but he went how many years speaking highly of of Russ, and then he has this one moment on Shannon Sharp's podcast, and he says, yeah, you know, he says a few things. Like, you know, I just think it's because of where Russ is at and all the commentary around Russ right now where it just – it's just he has to win. Winning cures yeah. all. I, I will say this. To answer your question, I want to say take it, but I wish I could leave it. And what I mean by that is – I believe that Russ actually does have the opportunity to make a comeback, especially his skill set. He's still very young. But the reason why I want to leave it is because Justin is far younger and has starting experience. And I think that people will factor that in if Russ doesn't do good. And that's the thing is we're stuck in the spiral of offseason. So, like, we really don't know. Like, is Russ going right. to make – like, was Russ making a comeback and we just don't know it yet? Right. Or is Justin Fields going down? Like, we don't know yet. So, that's why I say I want to take it. Because that's the most proven concept, is Russ taking that job. That's the proven concept. I want to leave it because it's still questionable where he goes at 35 to 36. And when you, say leave, it, when you say leave it, that means you're really riding with Justin. Justin, correct. That is crazy, VC. You know why that's crazy? And Mo, <laughs> you know why that's crazy? Why? Russell Wilson had this man in his home. He stayed in Russell Wilson's guest house. I he had grapes waiting for you, Andrew. <laughs> Russell Wilson had grapes waiting for you. Russ, Russ, tell Russ, us about your thank you so yeah, much. <laughs> yes, I stayed at Russell Wilson's guest, guest, this, guest house. The thanks I get. <laughs> well, we talked about. He had a driver show. pick him up. He had a driver pick him up. He had a chauffeur for two days. Damn, who? <laughs> that's crazy. That's Took me to McDonald's crazy. at two a.m. in the morning. I appreciate everything, Russ. <laughs> But I have my GM hat on. That's fine. And I'm thinking like crazy, a GM. Though. I'm thinking up on more. You real quick. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> Chauffeur, bodyguard. Oh, no. Wow. Trip to uh, guest house, all the candy you can eat. Tell them about the experience when we, <laughs> oh, we, get, to the, we get to the crib. You, you pull up, the gate opens up. Yeah, bro. The gate opens up. It's about three miles to the front door, <laughs> first of all. <laughs> so you got a good five-minute drive to the front door. Oh. At night, it, you can't even tell, but it is, it's not a mansion. It's not an estate. Mm -hmm. It's a compound. Mm. Bro, like, he has a football field. He has a barn, about 30 cars on the lot, his own home, guest house, Play how like no, it's crazy. Yeah, I Work, see the but, field that he works out and it looks cool. <laughs> that's his house. Yeah, that's, that's his, his house. house. That's a flex. Have your own football field. And what's crazy is when and I, I want you to finish the story. Yeah, but yeah, like yeah. what's crazy is when we were <laughs> my last year in, in, in the league and I was playing in Seattle. We were sitting in a hot tub and he was showing me on his iPad. He's like, look, I'm gonna buy this house. And he's like, yeah, me and Sierra are trying to debate, you know, do we turn this barn into, you know, a training facility or her studio, da, da, da. And they end up doing both. Mm. And it's super dope to see. And I told him that when we were there, I was like, man, it's pretty cool to see, you know, all y'all hard work, you know, Sierra's and yours, you know, uh, bring forth this, yeah. right? And, you, and, and sitting there in a hot tub with you and you showing me this crib and saying, I really want this crib. And if I do X, Y, Z, I'm going to get this crib. Yeah. And for us to be sitting there at two in the morning with a car coming to get us in the freaking That's guest awesome. house. And he treat he had grapes. He had candles on. Actually, wow. no, no, no. I didn't wow. have the grapes. And now he goes, he said, I want to leave it. This is crazy. Disloyal. <laughs> Disloyal. Bro, I can't go under any more buses this week. <laughs> like, no, I, I just believe if I put my GM hat on that, oh, like... No, 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 no. Finish your story of your experience and then put your okay, G yeah. <laughs> GM hat on. And, and Russ did you was also just, tell him that you had a chef? I did have a chef no, make me didn't. breakfast. Uh, <laughs> Ru Russ, Russ was incredible. He was super nice. <laughs> uh, felt like a friend I had for years. <laughs> uh, <but laughs> you can't switch on now, bro. You did can't. you play pickleball with Sierra? 
No, I didn't get to. Okay, I didn't get nah. to. I didn't get those experiences. It was just me and who, someone else. I did play with. Uh, I think I played a little shoot around like like three minutes with Future. That was it. Like he was getting ready to go or something, and I just walked on the court. Or something. He's a part oh, of the right, family. Right, right, right. He yeah, said, yeah, he's a, <laughs> you know, it sucks. Part of the Wait, remember when you was on the call with Russ? And he was like, yo, Russ. And he was like, hey, what's up, fam? Yeah. <laughs> And now look at me hating. And wow. <laughs> yeah, after, basically, so we had such a great time when we did that special with Russ, and he really brought us in his family, right? And so it was good because it's expensive to travel and shoot these, and you know this, doing yeah. your own podcast to travel around the country, and you know, you're traveling with team and equipment, it's extremely expensive. And Russ was like, yeah, y'all just stay at my crib, no problem, whatever you need. And he really put us up. But it was such an amazing experience for all of us you know, that it's like all of us are like forever connected, right? Because this was a big moment for Russ, he doesn't talk. And so Andrew, big part of the team, obviously, and, and, and they create their own bond. And so like, after the show, you know, we're still talking about it. And you know, I mean, Russ and I talk here and there. And so I'm FaceTiming Russ and, and I'm in the, I'm with Andrew and he's like, yeah, that's what's up, baby. <laughs> the boys. What's up? What's up? <laughs> Two yeah. weeks later, I'm like, trade him. Right. <laughs> 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 no, I love you, Russ, but I'm just I'm thinking like a GM, man. Like I think they're gonna look at the potential and the longevity. I even said it last week. They may look at uh Justin as like a long term quarterback. Mm. You know, and Russ, yeah. granted, I think Russ could give them another five years. I do believe that. Uh, but I don't think Justin's gonna wait around that not long. Five. Yeah, five's a long time. I'd say like two or three. Yeah. For Russ? Yeah. Yeah. That's all he Aaron got left. Rodgers is forty. Come on, yeah, Russ. But is Aaron 35. Aaron at, at uh Russ's age was an MVP candidate every year. You also like Russ, Russ is into, coming off the Denver the years. So let you know? me ask you this question, or let's 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 talk about it this way. Last year they made it to the playoffs, right? Um, let's. I'm going. You're to talking about Denver, Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, yes. Coach Tomlin, yes, yes. Pittsburgh Steelers. So the Steelers last year backed into the playoffs. They won ten games last year, ten and seven. Yep. Please talk about the quarterback play. We've all heard this over the last two weeks since free agency. Russell Wilson's last year in Denver compared to all these quarterbacks in the Pittsburgh Steelers QB room over the last two years doesn't outperform Russell's last year in Denver. So you now take Russell Wilson, the start that they had with Coach Payton and the ending that he had with Coach Payton, right, being benched, 26 touchdowns, eight interceptions, super efficient. You put that into this team, do they stay Do they stay the same? Do they get worse or do they get better? No, that was my entire point. On the field isn't the issue. If you plug in last year's Russell Wilson into now what we have here in Pittsburgh with Arthur Smith, George Pickens, and Najee Harris, and that system they're going to run, that's a very good playoff team. My issue was never the on-field part. I was always concerned with like the locker room of Russell Wilson, everything I hear with like Cam Chancellor and Russell, I mean, uh, and Sherman, what they talked about, like mm -hmm. Le Legion of Boom out in Seattle, kind of like him not relating to guys, him not messing with dudes. And that was Russ already being a staple in Seattle. So I was right, kind of right. worried about the new <laughs> environment in Pittsburgh and relating to dudes. Yeah. Um, but you guys know him. I don't. That's why I brought up that question to you guys. And you, got, you guys said he's a great dude. Absolutely. Um, but but, but, but it, he, it's just quarterback is so much about leadership and bringing guys around you. And I think Justin, the guys really, really love Justin. Like one of my best friends in the world plays running back for the Chicago Bears. They're all riding for Justin. Um, I don't know if people are saying the same thing about Russell. If yeah. you can't even give him a call. If you're his running back and you can't give your boy a call, hey, let's get some extra work. Hey, uh, what are you doing tonight? Let's go grab a drink. Let's hang out with the with the wives. Yeah, I don't think it's that. I think I think that like the, mm. the Seattle Seahawks culture uh, was special and it was different. It was counterculture to most cultures. What do I mean by that? We battle it out in the off season, kinda. Then we get in training camp, and it's two different teams. It's team offense. It's team defense. We don't like each other. There's fights galore, all of that. Once we get to get through, like, uh, second preseason game, maybe the third preseason game, now it becomes the Seattle Seahawks. It becomes the L.A. Rams. It becomes the Pittsburgh Steelers, right? That, there was no line there. It was always offense versus defense. So those guys, right, like the Richard Shermans of the world, et cetera, et cetera, those guys, they stayed in competition. They always battled it out. And then obviously they I, – I will say this. Uh, 
I will say this to those guys, right? And, and, and I was there, and I had this moment with Doug Baldwin. Doug Baldwin, right, like, I think he ended up coming back and, and, and apologizing to Russ on some things, right? Um, and I don't want to go into too much detail because I don't know what's public, what's not. But, like, Doug Baldwin was special, but he also was he was tough at times. And, um, and I'm saying that because you think about Doug was a part of that, like, that Legion of Boom type culture, that type. He was that type of dude on offense. And um, try not to say too much here. And, and 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 I had a moment with Doug where I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm like, my guy, I have fucking 17 quarter. I ain't say this to him, but I'm just looking at him, mm-hmm. taking it. I'm like, I had 17 fucking quarterbacks. Do you know it's an honor and privilege to have this guy? You understand? Just because, like, he's just different. Like mm-hmm. Russ is, like I told yeah. you, what he's all about. It's about business. Like he's not going to sit there and kumbaya with you over mm-hmm. like some girls. He's not that type of guy. He's married. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, and so he moves a little differently than most guys, and and of course, there's always room for improvement and area of opportunity. But that Seattle culture environment is totally different. So what's coming out of that, it's hard to explain. But what I do know is uh, DK Metcalf love him. What I do know is Tyler Lockett loves him. I do know, you know, uh, Michael Bennett loves him. I do know Big Red loves him. I, it, it's just. It's media. It's 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 commentary, and so everybody got their own opinions and their own thoughts, and they never recovered from that Super Bowl. Mm, yeah, they never recovered from that play, and that's the thing. They never recovered from the play. We got the soundbite of Russell Wilson talking about it for the very first time publicly, and I I wish we pl- we could play it, but we're not going to play it right now. We're going to wait for the right moment. Okay. But, like, we have it, and, and, it, and it shows the other side to it. But there's so much more to it. Um, but I think, Mo, I, uh, I think uh, Russ has what it takes to lead. Um, I think Russ has what it takes uh, to perform at a high level physically. And it's going to be interesting to watch. So, Andrew is leaving it. We not You can't straddle the fence. You said, Okay, you I'll, said, leave I, I, I'm I'll leave it. I'm going to leave you're leaving it, mm-hmm. right? Mo, what are you doing? You take I'll take it. it. I'll take it. You're taking it? Yep. Okay. You're if the guys it. buy in, I'll take it. If, if he's changed from his <laughs> Denver ways where he had his own office and Sean Payton was saying, like, stop being political and be a guy on the team. If he's learned from that, then, yeah, I'm taking it. He's a dog mm-hmm. on the field. So so can I, so can I say this? Um, so is Russ wrong for having his own office or – you know, they talk about the parking spots. Like, is he wrong for that? Because didn't Brett Favre have his own office? I yes. Double check that. Oh, when he, he went to the Jets, I don't know, and then also Minnesota. Yes. Uh, what about what about what about Tom Brady? Remember, this was public information. This came out publicly. Tom Brady, he started out. He had a suite because he had a suite in the stadium where he would have his own trainers. His that's personal staff there, Alex Guerrero. <laughs> that's hard. And then it got to a point where well, they, kicked they, they said they, they kicked him out. But guess what he did? They gave him a space in the plaza in the same parking lot to open up TB12. Mm. I mean, they end up running and operating their own business out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That's crazy. So you got Peyton Manning. Did I say Peyton Manning? No. You said Brett Favre. Do you not? You, you think Peyton Manning, did Peyton Manning have those same privileges? I want to say yes. So, so why doesn't Russell deserve that? He, he could have it. <laughs> he could have it as long as the guys on the team don't feel like he thinks he's above the team. Well, this is this is what I would say to to these guys that like sense. that. Like yeah. and I'm and, and like I said earlier, like I'm you know, I believe I'm him. You know, like and I made my quarterbacks better, I believe. I believe, you know, you look at Jay Cutler to Kyle Orton, all these guys, they had their best years when they were throwing the ball to me, right? Pro Bowl, et cetera, et cetera. Not with me, no Pro Bowl, none of that. Okay. Fuck the mother guys, and this is this is a uh, this is like you know me speaking to you as a young quarterback. The quarterback is the guy. You're, we're not equal. I never thought that I was above Ryan Fitzpatrick, knowing that I made Ryan Fitzpatrick better or Jay mm-hmm. Cutler. Never thought I was above Jay Cutler because Jay Cutler is the quarterback. Yeah. The quarterback is just a special 
special position. It's the most important position in all of sports. And so when they walk in the room, they got to walk in a room and please, please push back, Mo. Please tell me this. Let's have this real conversation. Quarterback walks in a room. Y'all got to lead up and y'all got to lead down. So you are right about leadership, but they're not just a guy. The quarterback have access to the owners. The quarterbacks have access to the general managers, the head coaches in a, in, in a way that we don't. We might say hi and bye. You know, we may mingle here and there. The quarterbacks and like almost a daily or weekly routine with these people. You're the face of the franchise. Yeah. Jay Cutler was a part of the interview process when we were when we fired Lovey Smith and we brought in Bruce Arians, Todd Bowles, uh, uh, Coach Tressman, all those guys. He was a part of the process. That I didn't know. That's a quarterback, but he's not the only one. He wasn't the first to ever do that. And I'm saying all that because we got to understand that these quarterbacks are different. So all these guys in Denver or wherever complain about Russ or guys in other places complain about the quarterback, sh go be a quarterback. Go be the quarterback. <laughs> and then go learn what they got to go learn. And go manage what they got to go manage. Go deal with what they got to go deal with. The quarterback is special. Oh, yeah. Mo laughing just now told me a lot. <laughs> he laughed. He well, like, tell yeah, me. Push no, 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 no. Look, I agree. The quarterback is a different thing. You're the face of the franchise. Like what Tom was the New England Patriots. I mean, shoot, he kind of still is. Like mm -hmm. these guys yeah. are the organization. They're having meetings with the owners. They're a part of those interview processes. But you still can't act like you're better than people because just dudes aren't going to mess with that, man. That's true. Like no one, no one wants to play for someone like that. Like who's this guy? Like. Okay, mm -hmm. Russ, obviously, potentially a Hall of Fame career, baller in Seattle, but he didn't do anything in Denver. You can't come in like that and just act like you're better than people. Mm. See, I, see, the reason why I brought all that up is because I, you know, and I've bounced around. I, I've been on a you know, few different teams and a few organizations, yeah. different experiences. And what I, what I realized is when you're a new guy coming in, sometimes dudes don't play their role and don't understand who they are. Don't worry about, like, because so I, I disagree with you. I think, you know, like, that's why I brought up Brett Favre when he went to the Jets. He had his own office. He had his own privileges. Same thing with Tom Brady. Same thing with Peyton Manning, right? And so this is a quarterback that's been to two Super Bowls, won one, the most winningest quarterback through 10 years. Why wouldn't he show up the same way he showed up in Seattle, right? He didn't change anything. I do agree with you about being relatable, but, like, sometimes guys are like, well, why does he get that or – you know, it's not him showing up like saying I'm better than you. It's just like, no, I got my own office because I'm here at four in the morning. And then also I got all this other shit written on the board. Da, 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 da. You know, uh, I got my own trainer. Well, why you got your own trainer? Well, I can afford it and I'm the quarterback. Well, you're better than us. Well, why am I? Well, did they say that to Tom Brady when he had Alex Guerrero or Alex, what, what, Alex G? Mm -hmm. He yeah. had his own trainer. You yeah. don't think Peyton has his own guy? Pa Patrick Mahomes has his own guy. Absolutely. So that's that's why I'm saying to you, like, yes, I'm sure there's I hear what you're saying about being relatable and not coming in as you're better than everybody. But like, I think you have to accept that as a player when you walk in. And it's really is like, no. Yeah, we are a team, but the quarterback is special and he is mm -hmm. better than us in a lot of ways. Right. Because all these other quarterbacks did the same thing. Yeah. So why aren't we talking about them the same way? Yeah. I, I almost feel like just meeting you guys in the middle would be like making this the the standard for QBs across the league. Just have an office. Just have an office. Have <laughs> nah, parking crazy. spot. <laughs> that sounds about, crazy. You, you gotta earn it. You gotta. Earn you gotta it. earn it. But, but you, you just that gotta mess with you. I think it's just as easy as that. You could boil it down like, do I like this guy or do I not like this guy? If I like him, yeah. we're winning games. Yeah, man, like have your own office, have your own guy. Like no mm -hmm. one's saying Pat Mahomes and Brady and those dudes and Brett Favre when he was in New York didn't deserve those things. Yeah. But also the dudes love him. Like he's hanging That's out right. with them after practice. Like we're texting, we're talking. Hey, let's get us some extra work. Mm. I'm not in, I wasn't in that Denver locker room. I'm just telling you like things I've heard. And there's that funny uh, meme. I don't know if y'all seen it with Melvin Gordon when he's uh, on the sideline on the bench and like he's just kind of like smirking, like looking up at Russ. So it's like, it kind of adds to that Twitter fuel of like, hey. What happened with, with the meme? I'll pull it up. You just got to see it. Like like they're losing and I think oh, there's he's... a scoreboard on the bottom and, and Melvin's like looking up at like Russ is trying to like coach him up and yeah. Melvin's like, bro, like, why are you talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. And so those, those are the conversations that go on on Twitter, man. Like mm -hmm. you can't, you can't be a politician out there. You're going to battle, I agree with bro. You, like you can't lead from the back. You got to be out on the front lines with the dudes.
All right, I agree with you, dear. I agree with yeah, you. There dear. we go. We found it. <laughs> Let me see. He's just staring at Russ, and I think Russ is drinking water or something. <laughs> And there everything's, oh, everything's made worse yeah. when you're losing, too. Right? Oh, my goodness. It said, what Melvin Gordon was thinking. <laughs> oh, Petty. Y'all Russ looked petty. tired, exhausted, <laughs> yeah. drinking all the Gatorade in the bottle. And Melvin, like, well, you ain't worth the the, the, the the cool thing about all of this, man, in the sports is, like, we, we, we do love the comeback story. We love redemption. That's true. And Russ knows this, too. Winning cures all, right? And Absolutely. he has to go out there and win. And if he doesn't do that, you know, his career uh, – is going to be in a different position, meaning like what's next? How do you get to the next thing, right? It's going to be tough. So I, I'm putting my money on the most winningest quarterback through 10 years.